Hi, thanks for joining us. My name is Josh Garrell. I'm a product marketing manager for Amazon Web Services Worldwide Public Sector. Today, I'm joined by Brad Dispensa, Principal Security and Compliance Specialist for Amazon Web Services Worldwide Public Sector. Today, we're gonna to be talking about ransomware and ways customers can secure their AWS environments to manage that risk. Brad, thanks for joining us. Thanks, happy to be here. First, Brad, why do ransomware attacks keep happening? And what makes the public sector such an attractive target? That's a great question. So the reason that we see these attacks continuing to happen is because the toolkits that exist on places like the dark web have greatly reduced the amount of complexity, time, and skill required to deploy these. The reason that we see them so prevalently in our public sector customers is because um, many of our public sector customers lack the funding and skills and quite frankly, the ability to defend against these types of attacks. Oftentimes what we see is that the attacks themselves are relying on an older design pattern that many of these customers use, which is sort of the jawbreaker network mentality of a very strong network perimeter, but very little network isolation control inside. Thanks. Brad, we have some AWS services listed here. Can you talk to us about how customers can mitigate the risk of ransomware as it relates to these services? Yeah, you bet. So the first thing that's really important to understand is for a ransomware attack to actually be successful, they have to be able to hold your data for ransom. So the first thing that's really important is to make sure that you have a proper business continuity and disaster recovery plan in place. From an AWS service perspective, the way that we address that is through these services. So we can do things like use AWS Backup to make sure that we have automated uh, backups of things like elastic block storage data. And then from there, we can also do things like make sure that we have that data replicated across regions or across accounts. For things that are stored in an object storage like Amazon S3, the way that we can deal with that is by making sure that we have the ability to do uh, replication at a per object or per bucket level. So what that means is that we can take that data and replicate it to a completely different region, or we can replicate it to a completely different account. Then storage services like Amazon EFS support a similar replication and backup capability, as well as Amazon Redshift, Storage Gateway, RDS. In fact, we are gonna draw all the different services that support backup and uh, uh, snapshotting capabilities, but we thought it was gonna take up too much space on the board. Basically, any storage service that AWS offers has a capability natively to allow you to do some form of snapshot or backup of that data. Excellent. And what about some mitigating factors from an architecture standpoint that AWS allows customers to do? Sure. So going back to that earlier part of the discussion that we had around where we see customers struggling, it was that sort of example of the jawbreaker network design pattern. Mm -hmm. And the way that we saw that traditionally was customers had deployed network segmentation through demilitarized zones or DMZs. And if they had a shared environment like a shared file service, what they would do is they would place compute resources in there and from a usability perspective, what that meant was a user would have full mesh network connectivity to all these areas on the network that were supposed to be segmented. And so that allowed these um, uh, variants to spread very efficiently because they had full access. And in fact, what we see now is new variants like RIAC support the ability of spreading through technologies like Wake on LAN, making this even worse. So from an AWS perspective, the way that we would counter this design is by segmenting these into completely separate VPCs or even into completely separate accounts. And what that means is that we can now isolate the risk and blast radius so that it's contained strictly to one VPC or to one account. And that greatly reduces the overall impact should you become the victim of a ransomware attack. Brad, thanks so much for sharing those insights. And thank you for joining us. If you have any questions or comments, please follow us on Twitter at AWS underscore gov. Thanks again.